My name is Jenny Moses. I went to Haiti um, a couple weeks ago, and for me, it was extremely difficult, but also very rewarding and just an amazing experience. Um, this is my first mission trip ever, and it was to, you know, the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. So of course, I prepared myself for the things you might see, you know, people with nothing and the starving little kids and everything. But um, it's just completely different, you know, no matter how much you prepare yourself, actually being there um, amongst all the poverty, it was um, touching and it made you just feel really grateful for what you had the whole time. Something I'll definitely remember about Haiti is just like the smell of the country, I guess you could say. It's a kind of a mixture of burning garbage because they don't have any waste disposal. So um, they either just throw their trash on uh, the ground or they gather it up and burn it. So um, there's that smell mixed with uh, just the smell of dirty people since they have no clean water really to bathe with. and. Um, when you're starving, you know, being clean isn't really your first concern. Hi, I'm Madison Beard. I'm the Children's Ministry Coordinator here at Asbury. Um, I had the privilege of going to Haiti with the youth um, in June. And these youth were incredible. Um, they really came together and uh, made, it, it made a difference um, in Haiti, but it also, Haiti made a difference in our lives. Uh, the first thing I noticed about Haiti was the lack of infrastructure. Um, we were driving to Mission of Hope and there are absolutely no road laws. Um, the roads themselves have huge potholes. Um, you have to navigate around them. Um, there's no trash disposal, which uh, doesn't sound like a huge deal, but there is trash everywhere and we spent a whole morning picking up trash in one village and didn't even touch it. Haiti was the most broken country I've ever been in. Um, the amount of devastation from the earthquake and just the conditions that the people lived in um, were really eye-opening for me. Um, it's the first third world country that I've ever been in. Um, and by the end of the trip, we did a lot of stuff to help the Haitians, but it just didn't even it wasn't even a drop in the bucket um, as to what they need. Well, the first village visit, we went um, to a house and the mother invited us in to meet one of her daughters. She had about five children, but she really wanted us to meet one of her daughters. Um, and it was a seven-year-old with hydrocephalus. Um, she was brain damaged. She was about the size of a three-year-old, um, but her head was about two and a half to three times the size of a normal um, adult's head. Um, and the heartbreaking thing about this is that it w hydrocephalus is something that's easily preventable um, in the U.S. and all they have to do is a simple surgery to put a stent in the back of her um, head and it would have prevented all the brain damage. But because they're in Haiti and they're living in such conditions, there um, isn't much hope for medical care. The kids um, were so excited to see us. We would come off of the um, canter and they would run to us and some of the kids encountered a situation or two where they picked up a kid and realized that they were completely naked on the bottom of half of their bodies. Um, and these are like four and five year olds. And I think the youth really persevered and didn't let that bother them and just loved on the kids even though they were dirty and they probably had disease and um, I think it really opened their eyes to the way people can love um, even through such hardship. One of the kids that came to me, he held on to me, he wouldn't let go. He always held me and he wanted me to be all his. He didn't let any of the other kids hug me or touch me. He like fought for me. It was cool to see how much I was wanted by all of them. Uh, that trip for me was a really eye-opening experience, especially when we first got there, going through the airport and all that, and everything being hectic the way it was. And then we kind of got out, we started driving a little bit, and we just started driving past these shacks and just a lot of broken places, a lot of um, just you know, people were standing outside their houses doing nothing, just with, you know, bad looks on their faces and just sitting around, not really doing anything and not really having much. 
I was in the bus and I looked off to the left and I saw hundreds of homes just much smaller than ours and just sticks and a tarp on top of it and I thought how blessed I was and how unlucky that they are to be born into that situation. Um, what really shocked me about it was just their inability to get out of it because you know here in the US we've got it set like you, you know the grocery bagger at Walmart is nothing compared to you know the lowest of the low in Haiti because you know the grocery bagger at Walmart he's gonna have something to do he's gonna have a job he's gonna have money he's at least gonna have the basic needs to live and the people there they literally can't do anything especially within 80 percent unemployment rate it's just they really can't do anything and they're stuck in their situation I mean, I'm glad we were able to help with it, but it just, it still left me with a feeling of we couldn't really do that much. We couldn't, you know, make it completely better. They need a lot of help. They need some empowerment, uh, empowerment of their youth and their young leaders. Um, they're a developing nation that um, could use our resources that we can provide um, to make huge changes, huge leaps forward. Um, in the end, I just really think um, that Asbury as a whole can do more. Um, while in Haiti, pretty much the whole time as an individual and even with our whole group, I think a lot of us struggled with feeling just insignificant because um, here is a country that was just in turmoil and before the earthquake and after it especially um, just with nothing and we were there and we worked hard the whole week but you couldn't help when you left to feel like you really hadn't made that much of an impact and now coming back and have an opportunity to help start a movement in um, my community and in my church and I think really if we all pull together we can cause uh, to we can make an impact that um, I couldn't have made by myself or our team couldn't have made and we can really make a difference. It is for me personally it's good to, to know that I'm finally going to be a part of something, part of a group that's actually making an impact to help Haitians be able to um, provide for themselves. I think um, as a mission trip um, we really felt like we didn't do enough um, but if we come together as a community, the community of Asbury, um, to work towards a spe more specific project then maybe we would feel um, more fulfilled in what we're doing there. Um, and they certainly need it. You know, whatever we can do for them um, would be huge, life-changing. When I came back from Haiti, I actually saw an interview was with Tim Tebow, and he said that the platform he has, he feels like if he doesn't do anything with it, that it's wasted. And the biggest thing about Haiti is it made me realize that even some of the lower class people here or some of the lower class people here at Asbury, they have a platform and they can do more to help. And that's what Haiti really made me realize is that everybody here can pitch in just a little bit. We left Haiti with the sense that we could do more. We wish we could do more. We wish we could do more. We left Haiti just wanting to do more. We wish we could do more. Let's do all we can to help Haiti.